Welcome to Love Doll Science. This is Stacy Love Doll. This video presents an overview of the structure of the Earth, plate tectonics, and how plate movement has changed the surface of the Earth and landforms over time. The Earth is made up of three main layers the core, a highly viscous mantle, and a solid outer crust. Working from the inside out, the inner core is primarily a solid sphere about 1,220 kilometers in radius, that's about 760 miles. The inner core is believed to be made of nickel and iron. The temperature of the inner core is about five to 6,000 degrees centigrade, that is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure in the core is about three million times the pressure out here on the surface of the Earth. The outer core is so hot that the metals are in the liquid state. The mantle is approximately 2,900 kilometers thick and is about 70% of Earth's volume. The core makes up about 30% of Earth's volume and the crust where we live is less than 1%. The mantle has an upper and a lower zone. The temperature in the mantle ranges from 500 to 4,000 degrees Celsius and the rocks in the mantle are under extremely high pressure and temperatures. This allows them to flow in a very, very slow, almost creeping-like movement over millions of years. The outermost layer of the Earth is the crust. The Earth has two different kinds of crust, continental crust and oceanic crust, and each of these different types of crust has different properties that cause it to behave in a different way. So let's talk about continental crust first. Continental crust is thicker than oceanic crust. It's about 10 to 70 kilometers thick, on average about 35 kilometers. The mountains we see on Earth have deep roots in the crust that we can't see. The crust floats on top of the more dense mantle, and like how only the tip of an iceberg st sticks up out of the water, we can only see the tip of the continental crust, the mountain ranges. Continental crust is less dense and therefore more buoyant than oceanic crust. Continental crust contains some of the oldest rocks on Earth. Ancient rocks more than 3.5 billion years old are found on all of Earth's continents. The oldest rocks on Earth so far have been found in northwestern Canada near the Great Slave Lake and also in West Greenland where rocks were found that were 3.7 to 3.8 billion years old. The next type of crust is oceanic crust. Oceanic crust, as the name suggests, is the crust that is below the oceans. Compared to continental crust, oceanic crust is thin, only 6 to 11 kilometers thick. It's also more dense than the continental crust, and therefore when two types of crust meet, oceanic crust will sink underneath the continental crust. The rocks of the oceanic crust are very young compared with the rocks of the continental crust. Most of them are not any older than 200 million years old. So, if we can't go to the center of the Earth, except in a movie, how do we know what the internal structure of the Earth is like? Geologists use geophysical imaging techniques to model what's going on underneath our feet. For example, when there's an earthquake, it sends out seismic shock waves that travel through the entire Earth. Seismologists measure the time it takes for these waves to reach seismic monitoring stations set up around the globe. What do you already know about plate tectonics? I bet it's a lot. If you look at a map of the world, you may notice that some of the continents look like they could fit together, like pieces of a puzzle. The shape of Africa and South America are a good example. Those look like they could just fit right together. Why? That's because they did used to fit together. The Earth as we see it today was not always like it is now. Land masses have pulled apart and joined together by the processes we call plate tectonics. There are 12 major plates on Earth, each of which slide around, pulling away from and scraping against or crack crashing into each other. Moving plates cause tectonic features like mountain ranges, volcanoes, rift valleys, and trenches. This diagram shows the location of the major tectonic plates. So let's take a look at what we know on this. This is the North American plate right here. Here's North America, the United States, 
And can you spot North Carolina? Right about there. Plates are made out of a rigid lithosphere. And the lithosphere is a combination of the very upper portion of the mantle and the crust. Underneath the lithosphere is the asthenosphere, and I always mess that word up. The asthenosphere is the zone below the lithosphere. It is made of the upper mantle and is so hot that one to five percent of it is liquid. This liquid allows it to flow. Asthenosphere means weak. Beneath the asthenosphere is the rest of the mantle, which is completely solid. So how and why do tectonic plates move around? The key process is mantle convection cells. In the mantle, hot material rises towards the lithosphere, like hot air rising out of an open oven. The hot material reaches the base of the lithosphere, where it begins to cool down. As it cools, it becomes dense, and it begins to sink. As it sinks towards that really hot outer core, it warms back up and as it warms it becomes less dense and rises. This slow but constant movement in the mantle causes the rigid tectonic plates to move around the Earth's surface. It's very slow, but it's measurable. So what happens when plates meet? We call this a plate boundary. There are three different types of plate boundaries. Divergent, where the plates are moving away from each other, Convergent, where the plates are moving together, and transform, where the plates are sliding past each other. But that's the subject for the next video. During this video, you have learned that Earth is made up of three main layers. On the surface of the Earth are tectonic plates that slowly move around the globe, and the plates are made up of crust and upper mantle, which is the lithosphere, and that there are two types of plates. Take a look at the vocabulary that you need to have this section, make sure that they're defined, defined in your notes. And don't forget the three R's. Review your notes, reflect, choose a reflection that best suits each page of your notes, and respond to these questions. What are the two types of plates and the type of plate boundaries? And explain the process that finds structure and plate tectonics. Thanks for watching.